Hi you guys, it's me Ellie again. Thank you for watching this video. Today I want to talk about the astral planes. Now I'm not going to be talking too much in, in too long about this. Um, this is in light of watching Stranger Things. And so if you have not watched it, maybe you should. Um, but if you have, you'll probably know some of what I'm talking about. So the reason why I'm making this video is because it is, I've been doing a lot of reading and such over the years about things like astral projection and people often talk about, oh, well, you know, this is what happens in astral planes and talking about twin flames and they're talking about, you know, the spirit realm and all of this other stuff. And it's come to my attention that people don't actually really know what the planes are really like and they don't actually have a real correct grasp as to what they look like and even what higher selves really are and what we really are and how we are related to the higher selves like what is the connection between us and our higher selves that is if you have one which is a bit of an off topic um so, one of the most important things about understanding the astral planes and what higher selves really are and also what we really are in this physical flesh, in this physical dimension, is we actually are incarnations of our physical selves and the way incarnations work is not what people think, which if you have a higher self, the way it basically works is the higher self's consciousness, which is basically their mind, is put into a vessel, a physical body, like the brain, like the so-called conscience part of the brain, okay? It is not that the higher self sits inside of our bodies. That's going to blow a lot of people's minds because when we think of like astral projection and certain methods, like I think the Robert Monroe method and talking about like the silver rope that comes out of our bodies and that is how we astral project. That is not how it works. That is not how incarnations work. And that is also, therefore, not how astral projection works. Now, the way astral projection actually works is it's really, it's going to sound a little bit crazy. Um, it's actually, the astral planes are not ether like what people maybe think of. Like also with the with the astral high body at higher selves sitting inside the vessel, the astral planes are actually just as physical as this physical realm is. That's also an interesting revelation because a lot of people they just think that it's like magic it's like you know the fifth element and they think that higher selves are like made of some different su substance than you know the physical senses that it can pick up which is not true now if you, if you have not watched Stranger Things, do so. But there's a few other films that kind of touch on to how the astral planes really connect with us. the In the physical plane, that is. So, in Stranger Things, the upside down is not like... HG double hockey sticks. It's not hell, so to speak, necessarily. At least in other places in this universe, that's not what it is. The upside down is actually 
the planes, the astral planes. It's not just some other mysterious dimension. It's actually the astral planes. Now, what we saw in that show, again, you're going to have to watch to understand what I'm talking about. What you see in that show is actually the so-called danger zones and the astral planes. Now, the Freddy movies, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies that everyone freaks out about, like, you know, your dreams and whatever, um, that also is people going in and out of the astral planes and back into the physical realm. And that is how Freddy Krueger is able to kill people. It sounds really strange and, you know, people are probably wondering how on earth, like, that could possibly be. Um, now, people think of, like, portals as some kind of magical thing, but um, if you've ever seen, like, a crack or hole that sometimes seems to be there one minute and maybe not the next or it sometimes it looks like there is something there and it's and then other times there's not like it might not necessarily be your eyes playing tricks on you um i've definitely seen this a few times and i remember one time i was just in the bathroom like getting ready to do my hair like straight straightening it or something and I remember looking at my mirror and in the corner of my eye I saw just a black dot with like green like the green outlines like all kind of reminded me of like what you would sort of see when your eyes were exposed to sunlight for too long it was kind of like that but it was not the same it's just the idea was the same and Come to find out, that was actually a portal that was moving, according to my guides. And I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting because I feel like I've seen these before. Now, I've definitely had some very strange experiences with this because there have been times where I've seen like these black dots, these cracks these holes and I feel like sometimes I step on them on by mistake or on purpose I don't really know and there's been a few times where things got eerily quiet and it just and it just seemed like nobody knew I was there nobody knew I was even around them like there was a time when I was in the airport about to get picked up and people kept like walking into me and not even acknowledging my existence is and they would just look and kind of look confused I was like I don't know what's going on with this and I remember a little boy was just looking to touch my face mask because it was black with sparkles on it and the dad looked confused and his dad said, stop waving your hands in the air randomly. My sister and friend later on that evening, when we were walking outside of her apartment complex, they both swore I was not wearing my glasses when we were walking, but they knew I was wearing them when we walked into the apartment and we, when we came back into the apartment. Now, mind you, I can't see without my glasses on. Everything is a big, fat blur, basically. Like, I swear I'm going to go legally blind by the time I hit 50 is how bad my vision is. So, these are glued to my face, and they both swore I was not wearing my glasses when we were out walking. Apparently, stuff like this happens... Because of being in and out of the astral planes. Now, you know, take, take or leave what I have to say about it. But Stranger Things is a pretty 
accurate depiction of what it means to go in and out of the astral planes. And the weird floating stuff that you see, like the fungi, the reason why you see that in the astral planes in the danger zones is because in the astral planes, just like the upside down in Stranger Things, the air is actually toxic. And that is apparently why some people that that may have come and gone will actually get respiratory illnesses after so-called astral projection and having these astral trips and this and that. Um, so when it comes to astral projection and people talking about it like it's some mystical thing, like you're going through and you have a rope attached to, to your back and your higher self is traveling through and whatnot. That's, that's not really quite how it works. I never thought that's how it worked, but I suppose this is one of those things where it just sounds more logical because the sound of going to all kinds of places physically and going into the planes physically just sounds completely strange and sounds completely abnormal. But then again, it's like, okay, so then how do you explain why when people go on these so-called trips to other places, they come back feeling winded and start to get his physical ailments, start to get, you know, bruises that truly cannot be explained by any logical cause, like bumping yourself at work or on the door frame or whatever, or anemia or, you know, anything like that. The logic, when the logical stuff can't explain these things, and when you start to experience these things with all of your senses, or at least multiple, something truly is happening and you're not just hallucinating. And especially when you have all of your senses intact and everything like that, I feel like then you're, you're truly experiencing something. And it is not just a hallucination or a delusion or whatever people say to try to make sense of the of things that they do not understand and have never experienced themselves and you know just trying to come up with some so-called grounded point of view of things and grounded explanations of these so-called paranormal experiences now from what I understand and have learned about the astral planes is that the so-called safe zones in the planes kind of looks more like daylight. Like pretty much what you would see on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's like eerily quiet and maybe things just don't really move the same. Like, almost like bad CGI and like anim animatronics kind of deal. And apparently the monsters that people, that children talk about seeing underneath their beds and their closets and such, because I have memories of, you know, seeing beings in closets and such myself. Apparently they're actually demons coming to surface from the astral planes. And it turns out only on Earth, the astral planes literally engulf the physical planes. And then the astral planes are all around us. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's actually really not a good thing either. Um, the planes are, astral planes are actually supposed to be more separated than they are here. And one of the reasons why people are experiencing certain things more is actually because the astral planes here are starting to merge more, which is a bad thing. 
and and movies like the Nightmare on Elm Street series, um, Stranger Things. There's a few other ones. Um, apparently, Skull Island, Kong Skull Island, that movie is apparently a place that is where the astral planes and the physical plane, the astral plane and the physical plane, I'm sorry, are merged together. And that's why you see like those really big creatures that are monstrous and... But when you see like the, the ashes in the air in that movie, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but if you have not, I would, this is another good one I would recommend. Not just for the science fiction aspect of things, but because it's kind of like a good depiction as to whether that's just seeing the difference between a so-called safe zone in the astral planes and a so-called danger zone in the astral planes. Now, not all places will, not all depictions of the astral planes, particularly the danger zones, have this, but the danger zones and astral planes will actually have like the fungi floating around or what looks like ashes from a fire floating around, which is which is like fungi and other toxins floating around in the air there. And from what I understand, the danger zones and the astral planes actually look darker. And sometimes what you'll see if you're in the astral planes, it, it's like you're looking at the same place but it's like either gloomy and just really dark and you see that stuff floating around or like you could be walking in the woods and you and it will look like it's nighttime and kind of bluish but maybe with like street lights it's it's really weird um and this is and you may not believe this i mean take or leave what i have to say in this video anyways but um i remember one night I was laying in my bed. This is like where I'm talking about like the full on five senses stuff is going on here. I remember one night I went to lay down in my bed. I laid down in my bed and a moment later I was standing in what looked like a wooded area. And it was dark and I saw those street lights. And I just, I felt like I was staring at a building from the distance. But it was like, I was like, where am I at? Like, I felt, feel like I've seen this place before. And I have. Which is another, this is another story. Um, that, you know, it re relates to the astral planes and the physical planes, you know, merging and such. Or where they were merged temporarily. I saw in the I saw the this wooded area. Like I was actually standing there. I felt myself like breathing harder. Like I had to go like to actually get the air I needed to breathe. As opposed to like Like, normal breaths that you would take in here, in this physical plane. Normal breaths for the air you need. Where I was standing, I had to take those more exaggerated, deeper breaths in order to get the air I needed. And when I was in this place, like, I felt my heart was just racing. Like, I felt myself, I was walking around... And the, and the ground felt kind of weird, like, like I heard like the leaves rustling, but it also felt a little bit softer. And I saw the floating stuff, like what looked like, you know, cottonwood seeds and, you know, remind me, it's like fungi really is what it is. And I just felt my heart was racing really fast and... I knew uh, I felt scared because I was like, like, I just felt a huge sense of panic and terror. And I just, I knew it was not a good place to be. And, you know, like a few minutes later, I took a few steps and I stepped onto 
close to a rock. And I was back in my bed. And I felt myself, like, I dropped and everything. And I was just like, okay, this is really weird. <laughs> I just dropped back into my bed. And I, was, and I kept wondering, where is this place? And where have I seen it before? Well, it turns out I was in the astral planes. The astral plane here on Earth. And it was the same field I went to back in like September and I was supposed to go to this place you know a friend was staying there but they said don't come here but then they told me where they were I was supposed to go to this field and apparently it was something really important on my spiritual journey like I was going to see something in this field at night and I went there it was it was a couple hours away from where I live now. I'm like, really, man? Why do I have to drive two hours at night to go to this field? Like, this is this is ridiculous. Like, I was hoping to see my friend, but I'm like, that didn't happen. Um, and I carried my pendulum with me. I actually carried quite a few. And I was hoping to show this person that pendulums are freaking real. And divination's real, you know trying to explain to them some stuff but anyway brought several of them and I actually remember saw, seeing some very interesting stuff that night and it's more evidence that I will I can actually go in and out of the uh, the plane the so-called planes you know in and out going back and forth between the physical and astral plane planes I remember seeing something just no sense of logic can talk you out of this one can talk me out of this one it because the reality is truth is stranger than fiction I was in this field and I remember seeing something with red eyes standing behind a rock and And it it scared the living daylights out of me. It looked like a big beast. What I saw that night. And then something else really interesting happened. Someone on my pendulum answered, "You may not see the see them, and you you may or may not see your friend." Yeah, I saw them all right, but. It's just going to sound super strange. Like, they just zipped past me. I was like, what the hell? Like, what the hell did I just see? It was like a blur, and it looked like them, but it wasn't. I don't didn't really know. And I felt, when they zipped past me, I felt a scrape on my arm. And I actually, I mean, you wouldn't really be able to see it, even if I pulled it on my camera, but, um... But I have two marks on my arm from that night, from that, from what happened. And I asked my guys, I said, what on earth happened? Like, how did they scrape my arm? And how did I walk away with these scars? How did this happen? How was this even possible? It turns out when you're in the astral planes... You travel way faster. They w ran through the planes and scraped my arm. And that's how my arm got scraped through the car. And I was like, this this is not possible. How is this happening? It should not be possible. But, but it happened. I have the scars on my arm. And I felt sick as all get out for two days afterwards. Like... I felt like my, my skin was all clammy and I could barely stand without getting dizzy. It, it was bad, like bad. Like I thought I was going to just die from a heart attack those two days. It was pretty, pretty bad afterwards. Part of the point of me going 
to this random ass field, apparently for, for a few reasons. One was to see that, you know, what it's really like to go in and out, going between the astral plane and the physical plane. What it, what it looks like when you're actually seeing someone go in and out of the astral planes. And also, because I would later on end up in that same field, physically, seeing the, the street lights and all this other stuff, to realize that when I was near that place, I was seeing what this person was seeing, but does not have any recollection of. This is one reason why my guides call dreaming delusion time. It's because sometimes, you know, you actually are in the astral planes doing stuff and you just think it's a dream. You think it's not real. You think you're not experiencing it. You just think you're dreaming. But sometimes, like in my case, there's been a lot of times where I wake up feeling like I ran a marathon and where I feel like I definitely have done something and I just don't know what. I'm sure other there's plenty of people who probably have experienced something like this and probably feel the same way and or probably have felt the same way at some point or another. But I really wanted to talk about this because people think that the astral planes are some kind of magical ether made place, but it's not. It's just as physical as this realm, as this plane. It's just like, it's called the other side. And it's just going to sound really weird, but there's been random times where I've come home or I will be even sitting in my house. And you know, there's been times where I know I'm like, okay, I do realize I forgot to flush the toilet. But there was times where it's like, okay, I know I did not take a number two yet today. But I'm seeing a number two and I sure as all get out flushed when I did last night. So, like, there was a time where it's like, I know for a fact I was in the bathroom. Everything was flushed and, you know, because it's like, I cleaned that day. And I was sitting on the couch and I go to use the bathroom and I see urine and stool, but no toilet paper. I was like, okay, this is really weird. And I was like, I cleaned this bathroom earlier. I'm coming back into this bathroom and there's stool and urine in it, but there's no toilet paper. It's like, I know, I know I always clean myself off with you know, toilet paper and whatnot. Apparently, it's a thing in the astral plane to, for higher selves to sometimes use bathrooms, especially your higher self if you have one, to use the bathroom and not flush. I thought I was going insane and just losing my mind, and because I feel like this has happened a few times before. I said something to my sister about it, and she said, oh yeah, the, the same thing happened to me two days ago. And she said, my guides told me that this is a thing in the astral planes. And I confirmed it through divination and my pendulum and stuff, like my ABC board and whatever that I have. It's like, yes, this this is exactly what happened to you too. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, you guys, um, why don't you flush? I, I don't know if it's like, you know, will we... I don't know if it's like some kind of test to see if we would notice or what the story is, but I guess it's like flushing out karma or some other stuff. I'm not 100% certain what it is, but I guess it's like an indication of like something is about to happen or you need to pass through something or you did pass through something and it's coming out your higher self's um urinary and gastrointestinal tracts. 
So I thought that was really interesting. So I don't know if that's ever happened to any of you guys where you know for a fact you went, you know for a fact you flushed, and then you go back into the bathroom later and no one else has done anything in your household either. But there's stool and, and or urine and, and there's no toilet paper and they didn't freaking flush. I don't know if that's happened to any of you, but I know it's happened to me. I know it's happened to my sister. And I'm sure it's probably happened to some people and they just kind of figured I just forgot to flush. It's like, no, it actually it could be that your higher self just went in your toilet and did not flush. So I thought I would share that because that, that was a very interesting revelation because I feel like that's, that's, that's happened a few times here and there for me. And I just, you know, assume that I didn't flush and I did. So, yeah, that was a very interesting take. And I have never seen anything like it in a movie or anything. But it's just, it's, it's just, it's a thing, I guess. And the astral planes to go and use the restroom and not flush. It's kind of, it's rude in my opinion. But it's, okay then. But, um. Yeah, so I felt compelled to share this information about the astral planes not being ether because they are just as physical as this plane is. So basically what astral projection is, it's not, you know, some magical traveling while your physical body is sitting still and you have to hurry on up and get back to your physical body. It's not how it really works. I mean, like I said, truth is stranger than fiction. And this is why some people, when they come back from these astral trips or whatever, they feel, they feel winded. Or if they keep going in and out of this plane, they get, like, respiratory illnesses. Um, and I hate to say this, but a lot of people that go in and out of the planes are not necessarily doing good things in the planes. And... Actually, this explains why some people will keep getting, like, sinus infections, um, develop respiratory illnesses when they don't really have any of that run in the family, and there's no, like, other logical explanation, like, black mold in your house, or some other mold building up in your house, humidity, uh, allergies, illness, nothing logical explaining that of the sort. Because they're going in and out of the in and out of the so-called pits of Earth, aka the planes, the upside down in the stranger in the show Stranger Things. They are actually going in and out of the danger zones of the astral planes, and you might want to be aware if you're doing this and figure out why this is happening, so you stop going and stop, you know. Because, you know, astral projection is not necessarily a really safe thing to do. And if you are doing it, you need to know what the safe zones look like and what the danger zones look like. Because if you're in a danger zone, that's actually where demons, and aka so-called monsters, exist. And yes, they do exist. Like the monsters underneath kids' beds and closets and stuff that I mentioned earlier. They exist. And if you ever seen one of those so-called cryptids or like so-called little people or, you know, some other mythical, so-called mythical beings, um, they may or may not be benevolent, but a lot of the, like pretty much all of the cryptids outside of like fairies and such, um, are actually species of demons. And you really want to stay away from them and not interact with them. And I get... And from knowing what I know now, I get very annoyed when people keep trying to prove things like Bigfoot is real and they're hunting these cryptids just to prove they're real. It's like, well, if you all really knew what they were, you would not be chasing them down. I'm just saying, and that's why these things, they move really weirdly and almost animatronics-like. And, and where people question the legit, like how valid and real a lot of these videos that, and pictures that they see are. It's like, well, maybe, just maybe, a lot of the so-called disproven fake ones based on, you know, 
evidence but not proof, so to speak. Like, oh, there's evidence. There's this evidence is like suggested and circumstantial, but proof is like you know proof is in the pudding. Like you know you can prove that you know this was taken from another photo and this was added to the photo in Photoshop and stuff like that. So I thought that was that would be interesting too. So you. Definitely want to be aware that the astral planes are just as physical as this plane. Thank you for watching this video. I highly recommend watching Stranger Things. I mean, it's a great show, but that entire show is actually a big fat Hermes nudge. And so, and Basically, like, Hermes was telling the producers, like, you know, this is, ba like, when you get, like, these random ideas and inspirations and things like that, like, they say that you're being spoken to through your divine hearing to do this. Like, I told this person that this is what the astral planes look like. I told this person that the bad places in astral planes are dangerous and their air is toxic. A lot of that show and the... Ex and you know the view and talking about the upside down and you know all this and that it's um it was the deity Hurdy Hermes very much was behind talking like to the Duffer brothers and you know everyone else that contributed to the ideas and such pertaining to the upside down specifically. I mean, uh, Kong Skull Island is another good one to watch because it it's a good movie that shows the difference between a safe zone, safer zones and the danger zones in the planes. And then Nightmare on Elm Street kind of shows ways in which the astral planes and the physical planes merge and how... What happens in astral planes can physically impact us. So again, I do wa recommend watching those movies. I thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a good one. And please, I would love to hear your experiences and your thoughts in the comments below. Have a good night.